Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem backspace string compare. We're given two strings S and T and we want to return true if they are the same string, but there's a catch here. We can't just do a basic string compare because there is a special character, the pound sign, and this counts as a backspace character. So let's take a look at this first example. So this string here is not going to evaluate to a b pound c. It actually evaluates uh, since this counts as a backspace. It's going to delete the nearest character, or you could even think of it like a stack pop operation if we were iterating through this string from left to right. But that would basically be the a. Then we add the b. Then we pop the b. So we get rid of it, and then we add the c and we end up with AC. This string will actually become the same string here. Even though there's a D character here and this one had a B, the D is going to be deleted. So we have an A, then we have a D, then we get the pound. It removes the D, we get rid of it, and then we end up lastly with a C so that we find that these two strings actually are equal to each other. So I kind of just mentioned how to solve this problem actually. We are going to convert each string to its real representation without the pound sign. And the easiest way to do it is to iterate through the string from left to right and maintain each character in a stack. Every time we see a pound character, we pop the most recent uh, character in the stack if the stack is non-empty. It looks like we can add backspaces, like we could even start with some backspaces, I guess, in the string and not have any characters here. In that case, the backspaces don't really do anything. We still remain with an empty string, AKA an empty stack. So this is one valid way to solve this leak code easy problem. I think that's the easy solution for this problem. It would be iterating over each string. Let's say the length of this string has N characters, this string has m characters. The time complexity, of course, is going to be n plus m. We do have to iterate over both strings. And the memory complexity, in the worst case, could be the same. We have to have a stack for each string. So that might also be n plus m. Now, I'm not going to code this solution up because I think it's not super difficult. And there actually is a solution. The follow up for this problem is can we optimize the memory complexity? Can we actually solve this in O of one memory? And that I will say probably isn't an easy problem to be able to solve this in constant memory. But the solution isn't super difficult. Now let's think about this without saving anything, without having a stack. How could we do this by iterating from left to right? Let's say we're, we're trying to do the exact same thing. We're trying to convert this into its real representation. AC. How would we do that? We can't really do it from left to right because let's say we're not even trying to actually like build an extra string. We're just trying to actually compare it character by character. Like we want the first valid character from this string so that we can compare it with the first valid character of this string. We don't know. Like going at the beginning, we have no idea. Is this actually going to be the first character? Because for all we know, there might be a bunch of like pound signs that come after it that end up deleting this character. So we really don't know going from left to right. Are these valid characters or not? Because the pound in this case is going to delete in that direction. Notice how the pound is not deleting anything to the right of it only deleting things to the left of it. So knowing that the first thing you would try without even knowing what the solution is, the first thing you should try is, okay, maybe we can iterate through the string in the other direction. This is a very, very common technique that can be applied to a lot of problems. Just because iterating from left to right doesn't work doesn't mean we can't try the opposite. We can't try going right to left. And sometimes when that doesn't work, you end up with two pointers, maybe initialized at the edges of the array, or maybe something like a sliding window. Those don't apply in this case, but I'm just trying to give you some suggestions for when you're stuck on a problem. You can just kind of try things and see if they work or don't work. But in this case, we go in the opposite direction. What we find is we know for sure, looking at the last character, that this is a valid character because, yeah, there might be some pound signs to the left of it, but those pound signs are not going to delete this character. They're only going to delete characters to the left of it. So when we are looking for the last valid character in each string, that's something we can actually accomplish. So that's what we do. Get the last valid character from each string and we find that 
they are uh, the same. So then we shift our pointer. Now we're going to take the pointer here and we find that it's a pound character. So what that just tells us is just move one more spot to the left, move these pointers to the left by one. So now pointer here and pointer here. But that pound sign told us not only to shift, like we're not just going to skip every pound sign, but we're also going to keep track of it because that's going to tell us that now we can actually skip this character as well. We have a count of one here and a count of one here in terms of like the pound signs that we've seen. So we shift each pointer by one once again. Now we end up at the A character. We find that these two are equal. So so far, the strings are still the same. We shift these pointers out of bounds, and then we're done. When both pointers go out of bounds, we know that the strings are equal because we found that every character we compared was equal, and now both of the pointers are out of bounds. But suppose that this string actually had another character, like there's an X over here, but this pointer is out of bounds. Do you think these two strings are equal? Probably not. This one still has characters. This one doesn't have anything. So we will have to account for that in our code. But that's the idea here. Notice that the solution basically relies on having two pointers initialized at the end of each string and basically just shifting them in the opposite direction. And every time we find a new valid character, we compare the two strings. So now let's code this up. There's multiple ways you can think about this problem. The way I'm going to do this actually is with a helper function. Like I said, we want the next valid character for every single string. And if we're doing that for both strings, we can kind of uh, deduplicate that code. So we can make this a function. It's going to be passed in a string. I'm going to call it uh, str, or maybe I should just do s, but I don't want to like conflict with this, but we'll stick with str. And we're also going to be given the index of the string that we're currently at. The reason for that is basically like starting from like the end of the string, we want to be able to find the next valid character. And then the next time we call this function, we might be in the middle of the string. So starting from there, we want to find the next valid character. But that's what this function is about. So what we're going to do to find the next valid character is, of course, we want the index to be in bounds. So while the index is greater than or equal to zero, let us find the next valid character. And we're going to use this same pointer, and that's ultimately what we're going to return as well. Now, on every iteration of this loop, we are going to take our index and decrement it by one. Well, almost every index, because there is one case where, suppose that in this string, the index or the character is not equal to the pound. In that case, we do not want to shift the pointer. That means we're at a character that's not a backspace, and that is the next valid character. So we just break out of this loop at that point and then just return the starting index. We would not have decremented it at all in that possible case. But otherwise, we want to count the number of backspaces. So suppose else if that this character actually is a backspace or the pound sign. In that case, we want to count the number of backspaces because we could have multiple consecutive backspaces. So I'm going to have a variable that I'm going to increment. It's going to initially be set to zero and we're going to increment it on each iteration of the loop. And that also reminds me that in this case, we could uh, be at a point where, yes, we're at a non backspace character, but the number of backspaces is not equal to zero. It's greater than zero. So we would only want to break if the count was set to zero. We have no backspaces and the character is, a, is not a pound. Therefore, we break out of this loop. The other case is that we do see a pound, in which case we increment the count by one. And the last case, we don't even need to name the condition. Like We don't need to specify the condition here because if we know for sure this did not evaluate and we know that the character was not a pound that means it was a non-pound character of course and we don't really need to do anything in that case but we are going to decrement the number of backspaces because we're skipping over that character and we're only going to execute this if backspace was greater than zero so that's kind of how i'm reasoning about these conditions there might be a more intuitive way to write these you can definitely write it a different way if it makes more sense for you. 
but ultimately this is the logic here. Anytime we see a pound, we're going to accumulate the backspaces. If we see a non-pound character, we're going to decrement the backspaces unless the number of backspaces is equal to zero and we see a non-pound, then we just break out of this. So once you do that, we've more or less solved the problem. At this point, we're going to have the two pointers I talked about. I'm going to call them index S and index a T. You could also do I and J. That's what I usually do, but we'll keep it a bit more intuitive this time. And they're going to be, uh, these pointers are going to be initialized to the end of each string. And then we're just going to have our two pointer algorithm. So I'm going to have a while loop here. For now, I'm not going to specify the condition, but basically we're going to call next valid character for each of these strings for s passing in index s which is going to be initially at the end of the string and doing the exact same thing for the t string index underscore t and what these are going to return to us are not the characters they're going to return the index and i did that intentionally because what if the index was out of bounds what if the index became less than zero well that's something we're going to have to handle here. So we're going to take these and uh, reassign the indices. And we want to, of course, compare the characters. We want to compare S of uh, index S. Is it equal to T at index T? And if they're not equal, that's actually the more important case. That's when we would return false. But we know we might get an index out of bounds error like this. So what I'm actually going to do here is have a couple variables. I'm going to call it character s and the way we're going to get that is a ternary operator i'm going to do something a little bit clever here and that is this is going to be assigned to index uh, s at index s if the index is greater than or equal to zero basically if it's in bounds and if it's not in bounds i'm going to give it a default value here i'm just going to give it an empty string to basically indicate that this was out of bounds. I'm going to do the exact same thing for T. So character T is going to be in string T, index T, if it's in bounds, otherwise it's going to be empty. Now we don't have the risk of an index out of bounds error here. We can replace these like this. So that's just like the intuitive way that I like to do it. So we don't get any like crazy uh, error, but that's the thing we're going to be looking for. If they are not equal or if one of them went out of bounds, of course, this will evaluate to false. It will return false. And otherwise, we're just going to take the pointers and decrement them each time just like this. And if we were to reach the end of the loop or basically another way to say this is if we were to have one of the strings go out of bounds or the characters are unequal. We know for sure this is going to return false. But if that was not the case, we would probably want to return true out here. So last thing is what is going to be the condition for this? Well, if we were to find unequal characters or one of the pointers go out of bounds, we would definitely want to return false here. So we want to be very sure by the time we get out of this loop that the strings are equal. For us to do that, we are going to ensure that the pointers are in bounds. So the first pointer is in bounds and the second pointer is in bounds. But this actually does not cover one of the cases. The reason we need to change this and to an or is because what if one of the pointers went out of bounds, but the other one didn't go out of bounds? We would want to return false in that case, and that's only going to happen with these lines of code. So that's why we put the or here. If one of these goes out of bounds, we want to return false, and we do that in the loop instead of outside here. So this is the entire code. So now let's go ahead and run this to make sure that it works. As you can see on the left, yes, it does, and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.